Hey everyone, today I'm doing intermittent fasting. Woohoo! Is it time to eat yet? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Kasana Health channel, the best health information channel for people with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. So two weeks ago, I did a video about the best diet for type 2 diabetes, and I compared the keto and the vegan diets. And so I talked about all the benefits and drawbacks of each of these diets. Today I'm going to do the same thing by addressing all the pros and cons of intermittent fasting because it has become one of the most popular diets for weight loss. As you may know, people in favor of intermittent fasting claim that, amongst other things, it improves your metabolism, it strengthens your immune system, it protects against cancer, and even extends your lifespan. But is that true and is it right for you? Can you fast if you have type 2 diabetes? Is it safe? And will it help you control your blood sugar levels? It's not because celebrities like Jennifer Aniston or Hugh Jackman have endorsed it that it means that it's right for you. First off, what is intermittent fasting and what does it look like? Intermittent fasting is basically an eating pattern where you cycle between periods of fasting and periods of eating. There are many types of intermittent fasting depending on how long and how often you fast. The first way of doing intermittent fasting is to set a daily fasting window. So the 16 to 8 model being the most popular, it basically means that you're fasting for 16 hours and then you're eating during an 8 hour window. But people will sometimes adjust the fasting period for either longer or shorter periods of time. So for example, the 14 10 model, which you fast during 14 hours, then you eat during 10 or the 12 12 model, or there are more restrictive ways of doing it like 18 to 6 and so on and so forth. The second way of doing intermittent fasting is the spontaneous meal skipping. And the third way is 24 hour fasting, which can be done either one or two days a week or more regularly on alternate dates. The scientific research on all these different types of fasting hasn't found one that is better than the other. So I won't linger on that much longer. Just wanted to give you an idea of what intermittent fasting can look like. Before I dive into the pros and cons of intermittent fasting, I just want to say a few things I've noticed when it comes to the research. The first interesting point is that a lot of the studies are done on lab animals, like rats. And the second interesting thing I've noticed is that when the research is done on actual people, a lot of the studies only include men, not women. If you're thinking, big deal, it's still valid information for women, well, I only agree that it's better than studies on rats. But we can't generalize that all the benefits for men would be the same as the benefits for women because of our more complex hormonal system. Which is, by the way, usually the reason women are excluded from these studies, because scientists know that there are too many variables when it comes to women, because of our menstrual cycle, which impacts our blood sugar levels. So I'll touch on that later on in this video, but all this to say, the research isn't conclusive, so we do need more studies, especially for people with diabetes. In the meantime, here is what we do know about the potential health benefits of intermittent fasting. Number one, fasting can help you burn more calories and therefore help you lose weight. The idea is that there is a switch in your metabolism. So after fasting for several hours, the body is done using all of its sugar stores and starts burning fat instead of sugar for energy. Number two, benefits on heart health. So fasting can potentially help you lower cholesterol, improve your blood pressure and your heart rate, it can also help you improve the way your body manages blood sugar and lower insulin resistance. Now, obviously, when you hear all this, you're probably thinking, well, sign me up. And while it all sounds great, it's important to remember that fasting comes with a few more risks when it comes to people with type 2 diabetes. But more on that in a bit, let's finish talking about the potential benefits. Number three, fasting can lower inflammation and help clear out toxins and damaged cells, which could potentially improve a range of health problems like arthritic pain or asthma or even reduce the risk for cancer. Fasting can potentially also reset the immune system by producing new white blood cells. But the duration of the fast for the effect on the immune system is important here. Apparently, the longer fasts of multiple days might be needed for strengthening our immune system. Number four, it can potentially make someone more aware of their eating habits. When you begin to focus on the timing of your meals, you might then realize that you were consuming excessive amounts of food 
or you'll notice that you are doing a lot of late night eating because maybe you weren't eating enough during the day. If intermittent fasting gives you a quick and easy way to create awareness and take control of your daily intake, then it is a positive way of eating for you. Number five, fasting can help you be more in sync with the day-night cycle, which means more in sync with your circadian rhythm. In other words, if you create an eating window that is not late in the day, you can become adapted to daytime food and nighttime sleep. And this is a positive because nighttime eating is well associated with a higher risk for obesity and diabetes. Finally, the last potential benefits I'll mention here, and I'm emphasizing potential here, is that fasting can boost memory and thinking. This is of course variable from person to person. Some people find that the opposite is true as well. Before moving on to the potential risks of intermittent fasting, I want to point out that for it to have positive effects on our health, fasting has to be combined with healthy eating habits. This means that even if you fast for a certain period of time, it doesn't mean that you can suddenly turn around and eat junk food, lots of sugar, or highly processed foods. Now, I know that a lot of intermittent fasting enthusiasts also combine it with a low-carb, high-fat diet. And in that case, we can't forget that the benefits and risks of that type of keto diet have to be added to the benefits and risks of fasting. I discussed the keto diet in more detail in that video that I'm gonna link up here, so watch it if you haven't already. Okay, so what are the potential drawbacks or dangers of intermittent fasting? Number one, when you fast, you'll probably be more hungry, at least in the beginning. You might also feel drowsy, irritable, or have difficulty concentrating. Not eating can also sometimes give you a headache. Of course, this is variable from person to person. Some people report that their hunger normalizes over time. But in my opinion, that also depends on what you do during your eating window. Because as you can imagine, if you eat a majority of carbs, high sugar foods, or highly processed foods, you might not feel the same way. Number two, the biggest danger of fasting is that your blood sugar levels could go dangerously low. That's especially true if you have diabetes and you take certain medication or insulin to control your blood sugar. In those cases, if you don't eat, your blood sugar levels will naturally be lower and then taking medication can make them drop even more, which can lead to hypoglycemia or dangerously low blood sugar. Hypoglycemia can make you feel shaky, can make you pass out and can even put you in a coma. Number three, the yo-yo effect on blood sugar levels. When you break your fast by eating, you might also be more likely to develop too high blood sugar levels. And this only happens if you eat too many carbs. Problem is, fasting can prompt some people to overeat carb-rich foods because they get really hungry or their energy levels are really low, and that's when we tend to reach for those high-carb foods. The yo-yo effect on blood sugar levels is not uncommon at all for people with diabetes, and that might very well be the reason why intermittent fasting is not right for you. Number four, there's a risk of dehydration when fasting because you won't get the same amount of fluid intake from food. Food like soup, yogurt, or fruits contain water. So if we don't compensate for that loss of fluid or water intake, then we would be at higher risk of dehydration or low blood pressure. Number five, fasting periods can lead to rebound overeating or orthorexia, which is a disorder that involves an obsession with healthy eating and constantly thinking about or worrying over your next meal. Something that can happen when you're fasting for 16 hours. Research has shown time and time again that over-restriction can lead to binge eating. So when you start to micromanage your food intake, it could be very similar to the binge and restrictive behavior pattern of disordered eating. Fasting also goes against your body's ability to tell you when you're hungry or you're full. So you'd be essentially overriding your body's hormones that are responsible for giving you your hunger and your satiety cues. Speaking of hormones, fasting can also disrupt a woman's menstrual cycle. While a lot of men seem to benefit greatly from intermittent fasting, women, on the other hand, can have a much harder time fasting. And that's because fasting can have a negative impact on a woman's reproductive hormones. For a woman who hasn't reached menopause, fasting can inhibit ovulation and reduce fertility. And for a woman who is closer to or past menopause, fasting can impact her stress levels, her sleep quality, and her hot flashes. Given all these pros and cons of fasting, let's recap very simply who should not be doing intermittent fasting. Anyone under the age of 18, because you obviously don't want to impact the growth or puberty of children or adolescents. People with a history of eating disorders or anyone who has obsessive thoughts about food and weight loss. Women who are pregnant or trying to get pregnant and women who are breastfeeding. And I would also add women around the age of menopause. And finally, people with advanced diabetes or people taking medication for diabetes, unless they are under the close supervision of a medical professional.
If you don't fall in any of the previous categories of people and you want to improve your health using some of the information in this video, here is what I suggest. Consider a simple form of intermittent fasting. So start by snacking less between meals. And then avoid snacking or eating at nighttime so you can follow your circadian rhythm, your day and night cycle. So if you decide to limit the hours of the day when you eat, do it earlier in the day. For example, make your eating window begin at 7 or 8 a.m. and then make it end sometime in the afternoon or early evening around 6 or 7 p.m. But avoid the all too common fasting all day and then having only one late meal at the end of the day. And finally, to get the maximum amount of benefits if you are doing intermittent fasting, always combine it with healthy eating and lifestyle habits. The bottom line is, if you're doing intermittent fasting just to lose weight, I really urge you to remember that fasting is not necessary for weight loss. And as I always say, if there is one number you want to focus on, make that your blood sugar levels, not your weight. Balancing your blood sugar levels is the number one way to lower your A1C and defeat type 2 diabetes. And you'll notice that by focusing on balancing those blood sugar levels, weight loss will also happen, but as a happy side effect. Okay, that's enough information. I think it's time for me to sign off. Comment below if you have any questions, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my channel for more amazing content like this. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Is it time to eat yet? <laughs> it's time to eat yet. <laughs>